Hello and welcome to our fourth and final lesson in our course on basic systematic material selection. In today's lesson, we're going to take our Ashby selection methodology and apply it to a real world case study from start to finish and showcase how this can be used alongside simulation in the design process. Our objective, design a heat sink for a microchip application being used at high temperatures. Now, how do we go about doing this? And more importantly, what material do we pick? Well, we of course have some design requirements, which I'm showing here on the screen. Now, we need to design a heat sink that will keep our chip at or below 200 C. We'll do this by conducting heat away from the chip through the heat sink, but we can't conduct electricity in the heat sink because that will lead to electrical shorts. To achieve this, we have to take advantage of both the shape of the heat sink and the material it's made out of. We can see in the schematic here that heat sinks have these fins, which increase the surface area of the heat sink. By changing the cross-sectional area of these fins, we can change the heat conduction through the heat sink. By optimizing the shape and optimizing our material choice, we'll be able to achieve our design. Now, to understand how heat is being conducted away through the heat sink and how shape impacts this, we can use simulation. To pick the best material, we can use our systematic selection methodology. Let's start with the material. Our first step is to translate our design requirements. So we can see here that the function is to keep the temperature of our chip at or below 200 C. This is its maximum allow us service temperature. The constraints are picking a material that is both a good thermal conductor and a good electrical insulator. This will allow us to conduct heat away from the chip while preventing electrical shorts. Our objectives have to do with the high temperature function of this design, which also relates to safety. We want to maximize the service temperature of this heat sink. Now, I could use melting temperature in this application, but maximum service temperature is a better property to choose because it represents the maximum temperature material can be held at for a long period of time without a loss of performance. The free design parameter in this case is actually the geometry of the fins. You can imagine that different materials are going to need different fin geometries to achieve the best result. Now that we have our constraints and objectives, we can go into Granta Edupack to screen and rank our materials. Once again, opening our level two database, we're going to start with a limit stage to screen our materials. First, let's apply our thermal conductivity constraint. We can see that this drops our available materials from 100 down to 30. Now we can apply our electrical insulator constraint. With this constraint, we drop to, um, to only three acceptable materials. These are actually a difficult set of constraints because the materials that are good thermal conductors, like metals, are often good electrical conductors. And good electrical insulators, like plastics, are poor heat conductors. This has to do with atomic bonding, something we discuss more in our Intro to Material Structure Innovation course. Now we need to rank these three materials to determine which one has the highest maximum service temperature. To do this, we'll use a property chart with maximum service temperature on the y-axis. After removing our unsuitable materials and auto-scaling the chart, we can pretty easily see which material maximizes our property, aluminum nitride. Now, is this a good choice? Edupack has a search function, so let's see what comes up when I type in heatsink. The top material choice is aluminum nitride. I can see in the material record for aluminum nitride that it's commonly used for a heatsink, thanks to the fact that it is both an electrical insulator and a thermal conductor, our rare combination. Now that we have our material chosen, we can move on to simulation to optimize our structure. We can see on the screen here various thermal simulations that have been run on different geometries of heat sinks. We can see that by altering the shape and the number of fins, we're getting different results. So 
by iteratively running our simulations, we'll be able to optimize the structure and achieve our design objectives. And with that, we've come to the end of this lesson and the end of our course on basic systematic material selection. We've seen that different levels of material data are required at all parts of the design process, and that we can take our design problem statement and translate it into function, constraints, objectives, and free design parameters using the Ashby selection methodology. ANSYS selection software, like grant to edupack can be used to screen based on our constraints and rank our materials based on our objectives. We saw this in our real world example and how this can be used alongside simulation in the design process. Interested in learning more? Check out our other materials and material selection ANSYS innovation courses and consider picking up Mike Ashby's textbook, which goes into a lot more detail. My name is Dr. Caitlin Tyler. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.